Hey there, Ride the Car Guy here, and today let's put a snorkel on the eight ball. Now I've always wanted an off-road rig with a snorkel. I think they look so awesome. Unfortunately, as you may or may not know, the Xterra that I normally work on is my manual two-wheel drive. And that's just simply not worthy of a snorkel, right? Doesn't make sense. But now that I have the eight ball, my VK swapped Xterra, it's totally worthy. That and my front left fender has a little bit of damage, so that totally justifies me cutting holes in it. I actually got a second-hand kit. This is a kit that someone bought on Facebook and then decided to never use. The brand appears to be called Airflow. It has a little kangaroo on it, which I'm not sure what that has to do with snorkels, but I'm sure that's just the brand logo. At first glance, it seems pretty well constructed. It's completely formed to the fender, so it's custom for this particular vehicle, and it's gonna allow us a pretty cool finished look. It's gonna look something like probably that. It comes with a template and instructions with everything that we need to do, so I'm gonna grab this template out and let's just jump right into it. Here's our template. You're gonna want some masking tape and some scissors. And what it tells you to do is to cut everything out. So I'm gonna cut along this line so it matches our fender line. And we're gonna cut here because that's actually where it goes in the bend here on the fender. It has some concerning warnings here talking about how this template may not match your product. So first thing I'm gonna do is take it and try to eyeball whether or not it's gonna be correct. So if I flip this over and sort of lay it like this, I can get an idea of whether or not the holes are correct. Yeah, they look like it, so I'm not sure why they would say that. They made the product and the template, so I don't get what the problem would be. So I'm gonna cut this out, cut this line here, and then we'll tape it up. All right, so we got it all cut. I'm gonna take some masking tape, and the cool thing about this template is it lines up on your fender line. So the idea is, is to line up the top, the part that you just cut out, with the top line of your fender, and then it's gonna come down the side a little bit. You'll see here where you have this weird little notch, that's the little notch up here in the top of the fender. So I'm just gonna line all this up and then tape it down. I'm having to tape across the shut line here of the hood, which of course makes sense, right? Because if you want this black line to be lined up on the edge of your fender. I'm gonna make a few small adjustments here. I feel like this needs to get scooched up a little bit. Awesome, I think that's looking pretty good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to line up this hole and try to get as close as I can to lining up these. Obviously you can't get terribly close to the fender and just kind of see if I'm in the right area here. Like that, that's gonna come up here. Yeah, that looks good. Next we're gonna center punch our holes. And again, I'm just gonna do one last look cause this is kind of the point of no return, right? I'm gonna start messing up our little fender here. I'm gonna run my hand down each time I center punch. So if everything's off, at least it'll be off together. So there's that one. Excellent. And then just do that with the rest. All right, once you're done, make sure you've actually punched all of them because you don't want to have to try to line this back up, right? So what is there? Five here, six, seven. All right, now to remove it and see how much paint I chipped. Oh, none. All right, very good. Looks like we have all seven here. They're looking good. It's gonna be a great starting point for our holes. Now the hole that's gonna be real big, I'm actually gonna scratch just so I remember that this is the big one. Now they want you to drill the holes to 10 millimeters, which makes me quite skeptical because this is one of the mounting bolts and it's nearly the size of the head. Um, my guess is maybe they're doing it for slop so you can kind of move it around a little bit and then mount it in place. They do of course provide washers. So I'm thinking that might be the mentality. So I'm gonna go for it, but you know, if it ends up being too big, we know why. The other reason I'm concerned is that they said to drill this hole with a one and an eighth inch hole saw, which clearly that is not one and an eighth inch. That's three inches at least. So I have concerns, but we're gonna move forward. And uh, you know, if it screws everything up, then you guys can learn from my mistake. If I recall, there's nothing back here to hurt. So we're just gonna go crazy, get these drilled and move on. Number one done, let's check our work. All right, that looks fine. You wanna let the drill do the work because you're gonna end up bending this if you don't. This stuff is not very thick. So I just went high speed, but I moved the drill slowly and it seemed to do fine. So let's knock the rest out. Okay, we have our, well, in this case, six holes. I haven't done the big one yet because I need to go buy a hole saw, but uh, I still managed, even with the tape, I managed to scratch this. Luckily, I don't really care that much and it's probably gonna be covered. Well, hopefully it'll be covered by this. Yeah, it looks like it will be, so we're good. Before we do the final install, we're gonna wanna throw some paint on these. We definitely don't want them rusting, so I'm just gonna gently run a little chamfer bit in each one of these, because it has a lot of metal burrs. That's just a personal thing of mine. It's probably not gonna matter, but I'm doing it anyways. 
Oh, that actually really improved it. Perfect. All right, I'll be right back. I gotta go buy a hole saw. I went and picked up the hole saw. I went with the three and a half inch. So it's gonna give us about a quarter inch on both sides to kind of play with. And then, um, you know, we can either silicone it or, or not really, it doesn't really matter. But my God, have these things gotten expensive. They now have fancy shanks that are, you know, specific to the actual bit now. And it was $55 for these two things. So that makes it officially 55% of what I paid for the entire snorkel. So yeehaw. But good thing these are super versatile and I can use them for all kinds of stuff. So I'm gonna start this hole with the shank and then I'm gonna tape over to avoid scratching. So hopefully we won't do too much collateral damage to the fender. And there it is. Caught that somehow, I don't even know. Must have skipped. But we have stuff like this that you wanna be real careful of. And then we'll worry about the other piece when we pull the fender off. And now we should be able to slide this sucker in. Ooh, there we go. Yeah, that's cool. All right, let's take the fender off. For pulling the fender off, we're gonna have a couple 12 millimeters up here that's holding the front, uh, the radiator support on, four 10 millimeters up top, two in the door jam, two down below, everything that's connecting the inner fender liner, and one 10 millimeter bolt holding on the bumper, if my memory serves. If it's any different, I'll let you know. For the fender liner, you don't have to remove the entire liner, of course, just remove all of the uh, screws that of course go into the fender. For me that looks like it was seven screws coming down and then going tucking underneath and then I'm gonna remove the two 10 millimeters at the bottom. The one up front you just have to pull back your fender guard and it's connecting the front bumper to the fender. Then we just need the last two in the door jam and this puppy should come off. Now the ones in the door are actually um, like slotted. You just slide the fender onto them so all we need to do is loosen them and for that, I just got a uh, ratcheting wrench. I find that that's the easiest. Just back them off a little bit and we can slide the fender off. There's one up there and the other one's all the way down here. Now I've ran into some of these fenders that have almost like an adhesive, like a foam band that's stuck to both sides. And then other ones just didn't have that. So you just kind of got to see. Well, actually, actually, that's a bad idea. I'm gonna go ahead and grab some gloves because I feel like I'm gonna regret it if I don't. Up top, you wanna pull your fender or your radiator support away. There you go, and get it on top. And then over here, do we have something holding it? Oh, you know what? I think our headlight is attached to the fender, if I recall. Yep, I forgot. There is one more 10 millimeter, and it's in here, and it goes against, I think it's actually on the body, but it's another 10 millimeter that drills into the body underneath the bumper. So I'm gonna remove one more screw in our inner fender, and that should give me enough room to go in there and get that one out. Oh, is there two? There is. Come on, man. All right, I'll show you. All right. Now it should be, there we go. Now it's nice and loose. You may find that the ones in the door jam are not loose enough. I've ran across that before where even if you loosen them, they're not really, they don't really slide out well, which might be the case. I think I got my adhesive here. There we go, yes. That is what I was referring to, this piece here. So that just sort of stuck it on, which no big deal. I just certainly don't plan to replace it. Gently set it aside. So for clarity, one of those screws inside did go to the headlight and the other one did go to the body. Not sure that really matters, just wanna let you know. But now that this is off, we've exposed where our air box normally takes air in. So once we install our snorkel on the fender, we're gonna run the air down here and turn it in here. But first we have to modify this to accept the connection because right now you can see that it's flanged. The instructions indicate that it wants me to remove this all together and then basically cut it off inside here. I actually don't really like that. I'm going to just try to cut just this flange off to make it flat because if you push this foam back, there's plenty of space on here to get a hose clamp on and clamp it all in. So I'm gonna try that first because if you cut here, you can cut further back, but if you cut further back, you can't reverse it, right? So that's what I'm gonna do. All right, this bit's technically for metal, but that just means it's gonna cut plastic even faster. All right, that made a uh, very quick work of it. And so I'm just gonna grab a little file and I'll clean up these edges and we should have no issue sliding the hose on and uh, getting a clamp on there. So this is the part of my plan that might prove difficult. There's not a lot of space around here. I'm going to put the ring on this first. So let me do that. And then I'm gonna just support this side and just kind of jam it on here and hope for the best. 
Oh, okay, there it goes. That actually wasn't that difficult. I like that this is highly collapsible too. That's actually really nice. So I'm going to push this on as far as it'll let me. There we go. And then I'm gonna get this ring on. Oh, it's already on, heck yeah. Make sure it's on all the way around because we're gonna be uh, defeating the purpose here if we don't get it all the way on, right? Ah, there we go. That feels really good. And then I'm gonna get, hopefully, a little miniature ratchet will fit in there. It will. All right. And then tighten it down. We feel like, feel like we're there. Oh, I just realized I have super dramatic lighting, sorry. Just gonna make sure I over tighten it. There we go. And that sucker's on there. Next up, grab your fender, grab your snorkel, and it wants us to install some studs. And the studs, it looks like based on the images, go into the three holes that are close to the main inlet. So we wanna grab these and slide them in. Now I'm going to, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna Loctite these. I'm gonna Loctite them at least on this side to make sure they don't fall off. So let's go knock that off first. Let me get a bunch of this on my fingers and then go put it away. I'm just doing the quick double knot method to get these studs in because I can only finger tighten them so far. They appear to be 10 millimeter. I think that's good. Should check the depth because uh, we don't wanna make them so deep that they don't go through the fender, right? With those studs in, we are going to dry fit. So grab this and let me get as much crap out of the way as I can. I'm gonna slide this on here. And okay, that's not great. Mm. I put this stud in too far, which is okay. So let's get that figured out and then we'll move forward. Hopefully you can see that. That, ooh, that one is barely out there. I'm gonna get a couple of these installed so we can position it and not have to hold it so awkwardly. All right, I'm glad you didn't witness most of that. So we have this hole here. We have these sort of align. These two appear to be off, which is a mildly upsetting. And I bet you they don't even reach. Yeah, they don't reach. <sighs> Super. So I'm gonna hope that I find screws that fit that are longer and I can kind of pull it towards. But this one, once I get this burr off, I should be able to get that third one in and then we can go position everything. All right, so this one is drawing the other, the other three closer, which is pretty promising and still not gonna fit. So let me see if, let me see what I'm doing wrong here. I don't know, I guess, I guess my holes were just too low or something because all three of them are a little low, which is super frustrating. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do yet, but these three are in. They're as tight as I'm gonna make them right now. And then I guess what I'm gonna do is draw where I need to cut or where I need to drill the next hole. So I guess this is what they meant by saying the holes were gonna be off <laughs> because they're just, they just are. I'm not sure why that's acceptable, but I guess that's the case. We're gonna move forward for now. There's a bracket. There's two holes in the top here that it wants us to put a bracket in because we're actually gonna drill this into the A pillar, which makes my heart ache. Oh, interesting. The bracket they provided is uh, also completely wrong. It doesn't fit at all. So if you see here, there's two holes for the A pillar bracket and there's not even remotely enough space in between these two to put them in. So, and it's not even wide enough for me to drill new holes. So, here's what we're gonna do. Not put those holes in at all. That's what we'll do. And I'll figure out something. I'll make a custom bracket at some other point. But the idea is they want you to install this on here and then go mark where the hole needs to be in the A pillar and then drill the hole in the A pillar to secure the top part of the snorkel. But we're skipping that part. All right, let's collect this bad lad here. Make sure that we slide it onto these studs. And I'm just sort of generally lining it up because all I'm doing is making sure that, there we go. Make sure it's not hitting the A pillar, which it's not. It's definitely not. So even if I went further back, there's probably, honestly, there's a concerning amount of space. There's probably about a half inch between the A pillar and the snorkel. So we will want to put a support in at some point before I do like long high ride drives or something where you have just a ton of air hitting this thing. But um, for now, it's okay. So let's go drill the rest of these holes out, get it to fit and then finish up this install. So I did the sort of classic, you know, just torque the bit in the hole to make it bigger and uh, it appeared to work. So I'm gonna clean up these holes. All right, so I was actually able to get one to reach. And once I got one to reach, I just sort of used it to pull the, the other ones in. So I got them all to work with the original hardware. So at least that's good. So now I'm just gonna back these nuts off, make sure this is all painted to get for rust prevention. 
Then we'll just uh, put the ducting on and then install the fender and we're done. For the ducting, we have a tube and only one, there we go, only one fits on, uh, on the actual snorkel and the others don't. So this one's gonna come up here and it's going to fit onto, of course, the actual air box and then we're gonna have our flexible ducting in between. So throw this on, we're gonna tighten that down and I think we want it to just go like, you know, 90-90, like straight up, right? I don't think there's anything too special about that. All right, looking good. Let's go get this thing installed. We're gonna grab the final ring, put it on this one here so it's ready. And we'll probably want it somewhere around here. So when I get up here, I'm kind of like holding it like this and we're doing all that. So let's go grab it and do it. So I'm gonna tuck, we have this piece here, the one that was on the headlight and body. I'm gonna make sure that's inside the bumper and that's gonna kind of hold the weight for me. And I'm gonna come in here and I just occurred to me, you can't see this, so hold on. I'm gonna prop up with my knee Kind of push this all together here. <sighs> Trying not to scratch the living crap out of everything, including myself. Ah, okay, there we go, perfect. So I slid it on, and now I just wanna grab this guy, and I am gonna spin it, and I'm gonna cinch it down. All right, so I'm gonna try to show you this without ruining all my work, but we have the coming out of our snorkel, under the fender, back over, and we are in pretty good shape. So now what I need to do is I need to get the rear slots over those two bolts. So let's push that back. I'm gonna open my door, make sure that it actually slid in and it didn't. That one is, the top is not, so I gotta back this out more. I'm just sort of massaging it into place so it actually like sits correctly. There we go. And you can see them as you go. It'll be, it'll be obvious where it all needs to sit. Oh, it's all too deep. Okay, frustration mounting. Here's the deal. All this stuff is way too deep. So this, which slid right off, awesome. This needs to get cut down because this hits the fender when you try to push the fender in. And same over here. This is super long. The rigid part actually hits the fender and then hits the air box. I need to chop a lot of it off, at least an inch on both sides. All right, so for this one, this is the one that went from the air box to this 90 degree elbow. I actually cut this much off of it because even when you compress this, right, it doesn't compress that much. So we're gonna save space there. Then I'm gonna cut some space off of this. I can judge how much I can actually get away with. Oh, a lot. So I'm gonna cut quite a bit off of this, maybe to here. And then I'm gonna do the same over here. There we go, that tightens it up quite a bit. A lot of space in that now. And then this one, I'm gonna pull off, there we go. I cut that off of this side, no that's a lie, that's off of this one. And I cut at least an inch off of this one, so. That combined with the cut on this, we should be okay to go. So I'm gonna tighten it all back up, I'll test fit it, and then hope that it works. All right, here we go again. Let's try to not jack up the door here this time. go. All right. Say a little prayer. All right. Please work. Hey, there we go. We are in. Perfect. So I'm going to reinstall all these bolts and the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to start with the ones up here in the radiator support. And the reason I do that is that you can actually see all the shadows, I call them shadows, but the, the clear spots underneath the washers where the washers used to be. And so you can kind of align it there, knowing that that's gonna sort of place it and then zip it all down. If you do find that you have a weird shut line in the door or something, you may have to loosen it and move it around. But uh, all in all, you should be all right just by uh, following those shadows. All right, only one more thing we have to do and that's to put our little uh, topper on here. So I'm gonna grab the little worm clamp here, slide it on, slap this on, there we go. And then we wanna tighten this down. Once we have it tightened here, I'm gonna slide it around actually and tighten it from this side. So it's on the back. 
All right, and for retention, they actually give you a screw and it's self-tapping and they want you to go straight through the worm clamp, through the cap, and then into the body of the actual snorkel. Gotta make sure I drop it twice though, and then put it in. There we go, okay. All right, so now that it's actually on and my frustration over the install has subsided a bit, I quite like it. I think it looks really, really cool. I did, however, scratch the heck out of stuff, so I wasn't being terribly careful because I don't really feel like I need to with this vehicle, but um, definitely watch the door when you're reinstalling the fender. I hit the little tabs that hold it on. I hit the front of the door on the top and on the bottom, as well as my super sloppy drilling up top. I let the bit sort of skip and then slide up the fender. So if you're doing this and you actually care about how it looks, make sure you're very careful when you start doing those things. When I figure out my A-pillar support, I'll let you know what I end up doing. Um, I might just you know, buy a separate kit and try to make it work, but what I'll end up doing is I will put an article on my website and I'll just put the link down below in the description to let you know how I handled that. So do I think you should get a snorkel? Absolutely, I think they look cool and it's even cooler if you actually use it. But what I wouldn't recommend is buying this snorkel kit. This thing was a pain in the ass. It claimed it was for the actual Xterra of this year and it clearly needed modification. I don't know anything about this. Like I said, I got it on Facebook Marketplace. This could be a totally budget discounty snorkel and I just don't know. But it's on here, I like it. The fitment against the fender is good. Hopefully it's functional. And now I'm gonna proceed to absolutely never drive in water deep enough to dictate it. That's it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please go ahead, scroll down, click that like button. Definitely subscribe for more content like this. If this video helped you out and maybe saved you some time or money, say thanks by buying me a beer. Scroll down, click that super thanks button. Thanks so much for watching, see you later.